All right, so a couple of people have asked about the uh, shared cluster creation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sort of reset the lab, but not 100%. Uh, so we're going to have one storage server, and we're going to have four cluster servers. And the way that this works is we have a virtual network. So our host-only network is going to be just for the storage. Our bridge network is going to be where the VMs can interact with each other. So uh, we're going to have two segments. Uh, the next step here is editing the storage virtual machine and we're going to add what we're going to use for the cluster share volume and I've got a couple eSATA devices so we're going to pick independent mode and persistent and um, allocate all the space, store it as a single file and then we're going to go for 600 gigs and this is where we're going to browse for where we want to put our storage so I've got uh, I've got these eSATA Pro boxes, so we're going to go ahead and stick the, this in a VMware folder. And we're going to call this Cluster Even. And that's going to be our storage for the, the Even cluster. And we've got to put the, we'll say it's VDMK, VMDK extension here. And now we just sit and wait. And when we're done creating this storage, I'm going to go ahead and create another one on my other external SATA. We'll call it cluster odd storage. Then we're going to do a couple more disks for replication. Um, maybe a rep even and a rep odd. And we'll, then I think for now, we'll just go with that. We'll get started later on. We'll come back and maybe create some DPM uh, disks as well. So essentially that's it for now. Once this is complete, then I'm going to show you how to add these within Windows Server 2012 on the storage server, create iSCSI initiators for them, and then we'll create a shared cluster volume. All right, so now that our disk is done, we will go ahead and shut down the odd host servers. All right, so since it takes an awful long time to add storage, what we'll do now is just go ahead and add a new disk for the storage odd. And while that adds, we're going to go in on the back end and just use our terminal server to get in, our remote desktop. We should see the virtual disks that we just created. So we go to disk management, and then we scan for new disks. So we see the two drives here. And so we'll go ahead and create one of these volumes, and we're going to call it cluster even. And then once we're done with that, we can open up Windows Server Manager and go to File and Storage Services. All right, so once Windows finds your storage pool, you can then add available disks within that storage pool. So for this instance, we're just going to add the, the uh, storage that we allocated for the even So we're going to take our we're going to take our primordial disk and we're going to call this cluster even and we're going to allocate this disk and we can also choose different types we could choose this as a hot spare if we had an extra disk kind of giving it some capabilities that maybe a, an expensive disk array would normally have and we can add more storage later, so they call this extensible storage. And now that we have our cluster even, what we're going to do is create a couple virtual disks. The first disk we're going to call it the quorum drive, and we're going to give it 
I usually give it about four gigs. So we're gonna call it quorum even, quorum even. And here we can kind of mirror what you would have in a real server, like simple mirror parity. We're gonna go with simple storage. And we're gonna choose fixed disk to allocate all the space. And we'll just give it 10 gigs. Or let's go with nine gigs for now, which is probably overkill, but I like to make it a little larger than I need to. And since we're only running two cluster servers, the quorum disk is going to give a vote to tell it whenever um, one of the other clusters are down, it gets a vote to show that, and then uh, the machines will live migrate off. So here we're picking our quorum even, and we're going to format it just like we would a normal drive. And we'll go ahead and label it quorum even. And we'll create this volume. And then we're going to come back up to our create new virtual disk. And we're going to create one more within our cluster, cluster even storage pool. I'm going to call this cluster even. Or actually, we'll call it CSV even for cluster share volume. And we're going to choose simple, fixed, and we'll give this one 500 gigs. We'll go ahead and create our volumes. And once this is done, we're going to create another VM, which will be an iSCSI target VM. And that's what we're going to use to target the storage to our uh, clustered servers. So if we come down to the iSCSI section, all right, so we're going to create an iSCSI virtual disk. And the first one we're going to choose is our 8 gig quorum. So we'll go ahead and call this um, quorum even, just like before. And this is creating a, VA, a virtual hard drive within that other virtual hard drive to allocate for the quorum. So we'll just go ahead and give it the 8.89 gigs. And we're going to make a new iSCSI target. And this target, we'll just also we can call it um, CSV even, or actually we'll just go ahead and call it quorum even. Like we did before. And we're going to add our servers. So if we choose server 2012, well actually it looks like if we choose Windows 2008 R2 or later, we can just go ahead and browse for the servers that we want to target. Probably already on the list, but I'm just going to demonstrate that to you. So once they're in the list, you can grab them from here. So we have HV host 2. And we'll go ahead and add HV host 4. So now we've created a target group for those hard drives to map to those servers. And I don't use CHAP. We're just going to skip that since this is a lab environment. So now we're going to create this high SCSI disk and now it's going to be targeted to the uh, high SCSI target quorum and then we're going to create one more high SCSI virtual disk and we're going to get our 600 gigs worth of storage we'll call this CSV even 
600 gigs. Make a new iSCSI target. CSV even. We're going to go ahead and add the same HV host 2 and 4. All right, so now we've created our disks that we're going to serve up to the cluster server. So we're going to add that to each of our host servers. And if this works the way that I hope, we should see that storage attached via the server manager. All right, so now we're going to try to add the target storage and this should be the IP address to the storage server on the uh, storage segment. So after you add your command lines or after you add your target via command line you can um, go back to each of the host servers and run this ISCSI CPL which brings up the graphic to then connect to the uh, iSCSI initiator. So we'll go ahead and hit connect. We want to enable multipath on this. And now we're connected to the storage. We're going to do the same. Enable multipath. Hit OK. And then we're going to auto configure, which it's going to find the devices and drivers. We're going to repeat this on the second host server. Connect, enable multipath. And go to volume and devices. And now we have our multipath devices. All right. So here's our new storage. Go ahead and bring it online. Connect to the other host server. All right, so we brought it online on both servers. Let's see if we can go back to HP host 2 and see if it refreshes and shows it online. All right, so now they're online and we're initializing them. Looks like we're going to have to hop back in between. To, to refresh. which is kind of a pain. All right. So now we can format the drive. And what we're going to want to do is 
make sure we use the same drive letter mappings on the other server. So we'll choose Z for the CSV. And Q for quantum. Just make sure that it matches on both. All right, then the final step is to go to the failover cluster manager. And we're going to create a cluster. We'll browse for our two server names. All right, so once it discovers the uh, cluster servers, you hit next, and we're going to create a cluster name. So we'll call this one cluster even. And we'll give it an IP address. All right, so now we're ready to uh, add all of the eligible storage to the cluster. And it's going to scan through and hopefully find our our two drives that we created. This to go down to our cluster storage and our disks. And if all fares well, we'll be able to convert this if we right click on it to a cluster share login. All right, so now we've converted our storage to the cluster share volume. So this concludes adding cluster share volume into our cluster even. I'm going to repeat this process and create cluster odd and go through the same steps. And then later on, we'll look at replication between the two clusters and we'll look at live migration and whatnot. Then we'll move on to the system center uh, product suite.